Hello friends. So in this lecture, I will discuss single phase synchronous reluctance motor. This is a kind of uh, synchronous motor. And we have all gone through the three phase uh, synchronous motor and its application. So synchronous motor, which are uh, comes from the category of single phase, they are utilized for a specific purpose. So first of all, I will discuss a little bit about single phase synchronous motor and their classification. And then we will discuss uh, more about the uh, reluctance motor. So single phase reluctance motor will be discussed regarding this. As we know that this single phase synchronous motor, they are special and their application is also very significant. They are used for low power drives where the condition is that constant speed operation is mandatory. So in case of constant speed operation and power rating is low in such drives single phase synchronous motors are utilized. These motors have constant speed and uh, their rating is small. So we can say they are constant speed machines with small ratings. One more specific thing which is referring them from conventional synchronous machine, they don't they do not need any DC field excitation. So DC field excitation is absent in these machines. And they also do not use any permanent magnet. So application of permanent magnet is also not there. So we can say they are operating at constant speed. Their rating is small. They do not have DC field excitation and uh, they are also not having permanent magnets. They are basically uh, broadly classified into two category reluctance motors and second one is hysteresis motors. So first of all, I will discuss with the reluctance motor. So going forward, let us discuss the construction of single phase and cross reluctance motor. So how the construction is there. And we know that uh, the single phase synchronous reluctance motor, the, they are similar to case type induction motor. So their stator is also similar to case type induction motor. So uh, they are basically similar to single phase case type induction motor. The stator part of this machine has two windings. One is main winding and other is auxiliary winding and the purpose of this auxiliary winding is to get starting torque. So this auxiliary winding is also known as starting winding. So we can say this is uh, similar to any single phase induction motor in case of what we have gone through in previous lecture in previous units. The single phase induction motor has main winding and auxiliary winding to get started. So for start to getting starting torque, so they are also having main winding as well as auxiliary winding. So we can say they have similar structure, stator of this machine is having the similar structure as of single phase induction motor. And the rotor of this single phase synchronous machine, uh, that is reluctance machine, reluctance motor, it is similar to that of squirrel cage motor. But the difference is there there are certain teeth which are removed. So they are removed from appropriate places. So as uh, the purpose is that they can provide a desired number of salient poles. So to obtain desired number of salient poles, some teeth are removed and uh, corresponding uh, salient poles are obtained. So basic structure you can see here. So that that part is removed. Now this part has uh, left and this is providing a pole. So you are getting four poles here. The basic structure or electronic structure is so on the left hand side diagram and right hand side diagram is giving a, a rotor structure. So the structure is similar. We can say the structure is similar to that of induction machine. So how it operates? Let us discuss the operation. Operation is all very simple. It is more or less similar to that of single phase induction machine. So this is connected to a single phase supply and in the beginning the motor starts as a single phase induction motor. So it's accelerate, its speed increases 
and uh, as the speed increases machine get accelerated so when the machine reaches to its 75% of synchronous speed there is a centrifugal switch which is connecting the auxiliary winding that centrifugal switch operates and uh, the auxiliary winding is disconnected so auxiliary winding disconnection takes place when the machine reaches to 75% of synchronous speed and after that the machine continue to speed up and the speed doesn't uh, ret uh, get uh, retarded the machine speed up as a single phase motor and uh, only main winding remains in the system so it operates with the main winding only when the speed of this machine uh, goes or reaches near to the synchronous speed the reluctance torque produced is produced right uh, because of the tendency of rotor to align itself in minimum reluctance position. So this is the tendency of this reluctance motor to the rotor uh, tries to align itself in minimum reluctance position with respect to that whatever the rotating flux and which is operating at synchronous speed. So <clears throat> overall what happens the rotor pulls into synchronism. So rotor uh, pulls into synchronism and uh, Effective operation of load inertia is also important. If effective operation, uh, the load inertia must be kept in limits. And uh, when the machine reaches to its synchronous speed and it engages with this rotating flux, which is operating at synchronous speed, the machine starts operating in synchronous, uh, with synchronous speed. And uh, after pulling into synchronism, the induction torque which was available for uh, getting the machine speed from 0 to 75 percent and uh, towards the synchronous speed disappears and the rotor uh, remains operated in synchronous speed due to the synchronous reluctance torque which is available and which was developed so only synchronous reluctance torque remains in the picture and when we talk about its, uh, its uh, characteristics of single phase synchronous reluctance motor, the diagram gives the speed torque characteristics. So we can see the torque is there, speed is there. So relation between torque and speed is there. So if you can see there, there are two conditions are shown when main winding and auxiliary winding is available. In one case, when only main winding is available. So in case of only main winding available at torque equal to zero, speed is also zero. So if main and auxiliary winding both are available, so starting torque can be, high starting torque can be obtained. And this starting torque can be of higher rate of 300% to 400% depending on the rotor position. And the switching, main machine reaches to a switching position, switching speed uh, position, then the speed increases and the torque decreases. So machine reaches to some pull in torque value and uh, that is a synchronous speed so at that point pull in torque is obtained before synchronous speed and machine goes to this pull in torque and reaches to up to synchronous speed so when the machine starts operating at synchronous speed the torque value is some approximate 200 percent so we can say the operating range is obtained so this is showing the operating range now we will discuss it when starting torque is developed and which is developed and this is dependent on rotor position because of salient pull rotor so salient pull rotor position determine the torque value and the value of starting torque which I have discussed in uh, previous slide that it is between 300 to 400 percent of its full load torque so it depends on the rotor position then the machine reaches to 75% of its rated speed, the centrifugal switch disconnect which we have discussed and auxiliary winding the motor continue to run with the main winding only. So <coughs> auxiliary winding get disconnected and only main winding is there in the system and it motor uh, continues to operate. When the speed uh, reaches to synchronous speed, the reluctance torque is developed. So what the uh, characteristics says that? reluctance to torque is developed and the torque uh, pulls the machine to synchronism and machine op starts operating synchronous speed and when the machine uh, reaches to synchronism the machine operates at constant speed 
and uh, there is a variation in the torque also so machine can withstand or uh, torque up to 200 percent of its full loaded torque so machine can operate at some constant speed up to 200 percent of its full load torque if the load is increased beyond the value of the pull out torque the motor uh, can lose synchronism but it starts or uh, it, its uh, running conditions remains as same and uh, it's uh, it runs as a single phase induction motor up to its 500% uh, of its rated torque and uh, we can say that uh, the machine is also subjected to cogging so this motor is subjected to cogging at the time of starting because of the saliency of the rotor so because of saliency of the rotor the machine uh, is subjected to cogging but this cogging can be minimized by skewing as we do in, in square wheel cage machines so this can also be done and uh, this can uh, reduce the cogging effect the power factor of this reluctance motor is lower as we compare it with induction motor and uh, because of the absence of dc field excitation the size of this single phase synchronous reluctance motor is larger than equivalent synchronous motor this is the um, drawback so uh, going forward we discuss its uh, advantages uh, so reluctance this uh, reluctance motor single phase reluctance motor is simple in construction which we have gone through and this motor has no silver rings and because of this the loss part is also reduced this machine do not have brushes and uh, this machine also do not require any dc field binding so overall the machine cost is low and because of this absence of slip rings absence of brushes and uh, dc field bindings the overall cost uh, machine cost is also low and its maintenance is also low so now going forward we discuss about its uh, application so this machine has very good application or we can say it's had wide application in many uh, field this machine is widely used in application where constant speed operation is required. So this machine can also be utilized in electric clock timers. The single phase synchronous reluctance machine is also motor is also used in signaling devices. This motor is most preferred in recording instruments. This machine is also utilized in phonographs. And if you say this machine is also having application in various control equipments. So overall, if you go about this application, this machine has number of applications and the advantage is that the basic application principle is that that machine is utilized in all the places where constant speed application is mandatory. So we can get a constant speed operation in this machine. So therefore, this machine is widely utilized in number of cases, a number of applications where constant speed operation is uh, mandatory. So this is all about we have discussed about the single phase synchronous reluctance motor, its uh, construction, its uh, characteristics, its applications, its advantages and its uh, various features. So this is all about this machine and uh, thank you, thank you very much, please watch it. Uh, watch it.